How are you doing guys from Yonkers Voice? We are sitting here again with uh, Mike Kidd, the Yonkers Council President, and we are going to be talking about the budget that just passed. Welcome to Yonkers Voice once again, Mike. Dan, it's good to see you. It's always, you a, always a pleasure to see you. Mike, there is a lot of buzz going on with the, the budget that just passed. People were going crazy, we might face layoffs, police officers, fire department, uh, library, and whoever, whatever. Most people were kind of worried, but at the same time, they said that's the same song for every year, you know, at the last minute they will find a way out, and they were right. At the last minute, there was a way out. Even though, you know, things, you know, things happen, but at the same time, we're happy. Now, can you tell us what happened that took so long for the, actually for this budget to be passed? Was it really uh, a, a danger of layoffs? Yes. Uh, uh, ben, once again, thank you for coming here to the Yonkers City Hall, fourth floor. Um, it was a long process, and, and I'm going to use a word. The process was very fluid. As, as, as you know, we finished uh, the budget hearings, I think, uh, May 28th or 29th, and we went almost 10 days, two weeks, and talking with our state delegation, uh, talking to the Office of Budget up in Albany, and trying to get funds. And, and, and that wasn't a delay tactic. That was literally constant phone calls, constant lobbying, um, constant working out numbers to see how we could save the jobs. And I'm going to let you know, on Tuesday night at 7 p.m., that was our last scheduled council meeting, what we had on the table was approximately 30 layoffs at Tuesday night. And when uh, uh, the mayor uh, spoke to our leaders in Albany, they said 30 layoffs is unacceptable. You know, then finally we were able to get the last uh, bullet aid of approximately 8.8 .8 million and that's when they plugged in the numbers and we finally received a formal amended budget at about 8.45 on Tuesday night. You know, and that wasn't uh, theatrics. That was everyone working hard to get the job done. Even, uh, you know, even labor. Labor met, uh, they met down, uh, they went down to the city and they even met with uh, Governor Cuomo's uh, budget representatives, key stakeholders to inform them of what's going on. You know, it was a very difficult, uh, it was a very difficult process to get where we are. And, and, and you use the word happy, and, and, and that is such an objective word. Am I pleased that we saved services? Yes. Am I pleased that we still got garbage pickups twice a week and recycling every week? Am I pleased that there is a, 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 no police and fire layoffs? I'm very pleased with that, that our Board of Education is holding, there's no uh, uh, teacher layoffs and school aides, um, I am. However, to say that this was, you know, happy, you know, it was disheartening to see the process and how we got here. So what motivates me is saying, let this be a lesson learned for bad planning, and let's use this as a learning lesson going forward, and let's put checks and balances. Let's make operational changes that way we're not in a position like this again. You know, Ben, you know, here, here it is. The ink is not even dry on the budget. And just next year on the Board of Education side, early projections are a 40, a 40 to a 50 million dollar shortfall just on the Board of Education side. So am I happy that's such an objective, you know, I'm, 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 I'm very pleased that there was no loss of services, that Crestwood Library, Riverfront Library, and, 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 and uh, the Will Library on Central Avenue are whole. So yes, I'm, I'm, I'm happy in that respect that services are whole. I'm happy that families will not be moving out of the city of Yonkers, and Yonkers will be a destination for other families. Yes. But going forward, we have to make sure, as the legislative arm of city government, what checks can we put in place? And that's something we're already working on. Yeah, but Mike, you know who is not happy? A ton of senior citizens are not happy. A ton of people who have fixed income are not happy. Because at the end of the day, they are the ones who close this gap. 
the taxes went up, and this is something that I don't know, I don't remember if you said it, but some of the council members that just became council members this year said that no taxes would be raised. Well, taxes were raised. Well, no, that is, that, that, that is correct. You know, including those seniors are my parents. You know, you know, people live on a fixed, they call it a fixed income for a purpose. They know what their monthly expenses are. And, and, and that was not a hard decision. You know, I, I'm not a senior, but I am also a homeowner. I am also a public school parent. So when I did and I deliberated on what we have to do, it was a hard choice. And when I spoke to people and I received, uh, then without exaggeration, thousands of emails. Without exaggeration, thousands. And, and everyone had a different priority, you know, save our schools, save our libraries, make sure our streets are safe. But the concept was the same, preserve city services. How can we do that without an increase in revenue? You couldn't have that. There's that old uh, uh, William Shakespeare story, The Merchant of Venice. How can you take a pound of flesh without a drop of blood? And that's really the situation we were in. And we look, where did this happen? And, and I say, it sounds like a cliche, this did not happen January 1st, 2018 when I was sworn in. This was years in the making and kicking the can down the road and the chickens came home to roost. Now, we just uh, interviewed the, the councilman just across the, the hall from you, Mr. John Rubel, and he told us that next year, we are probably going to be in the very same spot as we were this year. Are we looking for another tax increase back you know, in 2019? Listen, the goal is never to raise taxes. That's never the goal, that's never uh, the agenda. But I think he, he's probably echoing, he probably read the same report that I read about a potential 40 or $50 million. And again, it's preliminary. You know, it's a problem. And what we have to do is stop functioning and doing the business as usual. You know, I was just talking to some of my colleagues on the council and we were talking about auditing. And they're like, oh, you know, the city has an auditor and the Board of Education has an auditor. And what we generally have are to make sure that we have a balanced budget. You know, here's a bill, here's the money to pay the bill, it should be zero at the end. What we don't have is somebody looking at the way we spend, why we spend. Is it necessary? Is there a consolidation of services? You know, many examples came up during the budget hearings. You know, from our car fleet, the centralization of the car fleet. I don't know if that's efficient or not. You know, from the gas, I don't know if that's uh, efficient or not. The print shop, I don't know if that's efficient or not. You know, so so there are many ways that everyone has to chip in and, and, and tighten and tighten the belt. I have always said that this was years in the making. It's not going to get fixed in, uh, in the years. I look forward to meeting with the superintendent uh, and, and the entire school board and saying, what is their plan? I want to see a plan with benchmarks for a fund balance. Where are we going to be in 90 days, 120 days? What, is, what are particular indicators that we're on schedule or behind schedule? You know, the way uh, people need to remember, and uh, you know, obviously we have our municipal side, and then we have a board of education side. And there is, my opinion, very little oversight or collaboration. People must remember the board of education budget, you know, it's a little under 50%. I believe this, you know, this year was close to 45, maybe 40, you know, give a percentage of point. It was a significant part of our $1.19 billion budget. After the mayor appoints the school board, and then the school board, you know, vote on school board president, it's really very difficult, you know, uh, interaction. And that's something that we need to look at. That's something we generally need to look at. Is this the most efficient way? Is this the most effective way? And by looking at this, shouldn't be criticized as an attack or be critical. It's we have to do this. We have to look at new ideas. Or more importantly, perhaps we have to revisit old ideas because Maybe at one time appointing a school board did work, but for various reasons, things change. Okay, Mike. So uh, now, 
at the beginning of our interview, you said that initially there were thir about 30 proposed layoffs. No, no, um, as of the night before. The night before. before. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Then as the, you know, the negotiation came to an ending, there was no layoffs. But there is five people that, well, actually six people that are affected. One captain and five lieutenants. This is a question posed by John Flynn. Yes. Okay. Why, of all those proposed layoffs, it came down to six people and they all belong to the same organization? John Flynn asks, is that a retaliation against his organization? Well, you know what, uh, if he's asking me, did I retaliate? No, I didn't. I don't have the authority. I don't have the, the power to, to do a retaliation. Um, it should be noted that I had a very productive and healthy conversation with uh, Mr. Flynn. And, 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 and we agreed to disagree on certain things, but we, we agreed mostly. It was a productive conversation. Um, the particular question of why his particular members, it's a fair question. And I think that it should be uh, uh, deflected to the administration. It should be noted, uh, some of the, uh, the people affected, I know some of them. I, I, I know one for over 20 years. Before I was a lawyer, I knew him. I know his entire family. Another person that's affected, uh, you know, who is it? His niece is in the same Girl, Girl Scouts troop as my daughter. So these are not just numbers or social security numbers or line items. These are people. These are hardworking families. They live in Yonkers. They contribute to our city. So it, it's, 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 it's disheartening. It really is. And, and I do understand uh, Mr. Flynn's uh, disappointment and, 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 and how he feels. Now, to another question. In regards to non-show jobs, we hear that there is a, a few, I don't know how many, jobs that are non-show jobs, and uh, they're not peanuts. $90,000 for a part-time job. Were those jobs cut or eliminated, or are they still on the books? Most, that you know of. That I know of. The one that I advocated Against, and I and I generally believe that I exposed and brought sunlight to. You have to understand something. The city council historically has a runs. Everyone has an advocate. Everyone wants something. And you know when when you see a professional service contract and uh, you know, in the veterans department, or you see a part time lawyer in this department, or you see these you know you know low show or no show jobs, it's bothersome. It's bothersome. And what what what. What should be recognized is, as a whole, things should be done. And that's where, going forward, balances will be put in place. You know, I, I, I exposed it, but unfortunately, as a whole, uh, for various reasons, they weren't cut. Do you think that those jobs are still on the books because of who put those people there? Is it political? Oh, absolutely. I think politics, and I think I may have said this uh, one time, you know, I was always hoping that we could separate governance and helping people from politics, but to be quite honest, they work hand in hand. You know, everyone has somebody to protect, and very easy. If everyone's, if all the council people's number one job was to protect residents, their number one job was to protect taxpayers, and the hard-working families, many of those jobs would have been eliminated. But clearly, many of those jobs weren't eliminated. Now, Mike, the jail, the Yonkers City Jail, that was sold not long ago, just by the riverfront. Yes, yes. There were some conditions associated with that sale. There were some incentives given to the owner, to the people who bought those jail, that, uh, that building. But after the sale was done, none of the conditions were accepted. He is now using that building for his own private art exposure. How does that happen? You get incentives to help the city, but once you acquire the property, you walk away from that deal. Well, what, uh, we're talking about two different things, incentives and obligations. Well, I believe when that jail was sold uh, you know, maybe two years ago, I mean, it's a significant time ago, uh, you know, it'll be easy to say that I wasn't in office when that uh, a sale was done. But if you have information to say that there's an obligation that somebody is not doing something, 
please bring it to our attention. I could tell you now that I'm not privy. You know, I don't know what the details were. You know, I'm not, uh, I'm not even sure if that was an IDA negotiated uh, sale, which many times the IDA is heavily involved with many of the projects down here in the water. Uh, but if you have information, please bring it to us. And this brings a perfect segue to the whistleblower law about fraud, abuse, and waste. So, so, and, and this is something that I talk to my colleagues regularly, and, 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 and we debate and we ponder, and we decide where is the best place to put an order. Mike, so we don't have much time, and I have a few questions to ask. Albert Fakuri asks, why they keep raising the tax for my house? This is kind of a personal question for my house. They increased the water bill a year ago. Even though we got the cap on, t on the tax, senior citizens cannot afford those increases because they have set income. I guess we just addressed this earlier, right? Well, well th there's one thing that I know, that there was no water increase. But, that, you, know, you know, Albert's frustration is shared. It goes back to what we were saying earlier. Tell Albert I said hello. Okay. John Rooney, what tax incentives have been given to new development near the waterfront that you know of? Okay, that I know of. Tax incentives are controlled by the Yonkers IDA, Industrial Development Agency. This, the Yonkers City Council, even my predecessor and predecessors before that, have no influence in the negotiation of IDA programs. The only time that uh, an IDA deal or incentive comes to us is if there's a zoning change. Many common IDA uh, benefits include uh, a sales tax exemption, a mortgage tax exemption, a sales tax exemption. Many of them are, uh, you know, for a particular period of time. Some of them are, you know, wind down after certain thresholds are met. So, you know, it, it, it really varies. Okay, one last question. Bob Stuff. What steps have been taken to address the critical New York State controllers, controllers report so that there is uh, maximum Yonkers governmental productive accountability in the future? Okay, balances and checks, as well, you were mentioning. Checks and balances. Well, for, you know, for number one, I made reference to the whistleblower law. We got two auditors that are coming in. One is going to be an operational auditor and one is going to be helping to, and that's for efficiency and streamlining to see where, where we could save. And, a number one, and another one is to uh, investigate any uh, uh, allegations of fraud, abuse, waste, misappropriation of funds, maybe something that you just alluded to that I'm not aware of. Uh, number two, we're going to send up a resolution, you know, uh, in that auditor's report, there were many uh, uh, critical uh, comments. You know, I believe many of them had valid points. Some of them have been addressed, but I feel that there was enough that needed to be addressed and an auditor is being addressed. Uh, number two is bonding for operational expenses. And what I mean by that for anyone, uh, when we bond, that's a fancy word of saying we borrow. We're borrowing money. And what we're doing is, we're, you know, and this came out during the hearings. You know, we're borrowing money for cars. We're borrowing money for textbooks. And the, the ironic thing, the shelf life for our cars, I believe the commissioner said it was maybe two, three years. So we're still paying off long-term debt for something that we're, is no longer even in our possession. That's not sharp business acumen. It's not, it's not uh, uh, sound governance, and that needs to stop. So the question is, what do we do with cars? We cut them down. And same thing with the textbooks. You know, our students need the best textbooks that are available. You know, and borrowing for textbooks is not sustainable. And you know, and, and, and there was some compassion. We we got to make sure that children do have the resources to succeed. So we said, okay, this year the bonding was there. Go on next year. That way, the superintendent and this appointed board have enough time to plan accordingly. Okay, you know, and Mike, there are and, and there are many other ideas Mike, that are being formulated. You no, know, Mike. During the campaign, I remember you saying. If it matters to you, it matters to Mike. And another thing that you said all the time is the curtains are going to go up, sunshine is going to come in, and it's going to disinfect. Sunlight is the best disinfectant. How is that going? You know, it's going good. I know, uh, you, know, uh, you, know it's, you know, the road to success is always full of construction. You know, um, I, I rolled up my sleeves 
and I and, and I shake hands and collaborate with everyone, friends, uh, allies. I try to build coalitions, and most people are receptive to that. But there are some that do not want to see the city city council president uh, succeed. So I don't address that. I move forward because we're building a coalition of the willing. There are many people that want to see the city succeed, and that's who I work with. Mike, just to end this interview, is there anything that I didn't ask that you want to bring up to the people of Fiona? Because maybe you can take this opportunity if you have anything. Yeah, you know, uh, thank you, Ben. The 6.2 uh, tax raise, I've been here for six years, and including my campaign, uh, I, I say I've been in, in a political mode for over two years. And that 6.2 raise was the hardest decision I had to do. And the balance of, as we said, the seniors and the taxpayers and preserving essential services. And the commitment that I spoke to my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, including the administration, the mayor and the deputy mayor, is this is not sustainable. There's going to be checks in place, and hard decisions are going to have to be made. And if we go to a particular department or ask particular questions, that's not an attack. That's doing your job. I ask the residents to be patient. You know, when people say you can't change anything, you can't change anything, maybe there's a little truth to that short term, but there's a voice out there, and they want change, and that's what I'm going to work for. That's it. Thank you so much, Ben, for having me. Thank you. you. you got Guys, as always, Yonkers Voice is focused in bringing you news that is important and relevant to you. So stay focused for more. Thank you.